how your your sound post is in pieces. <laughs> you know, it's it, the sound post is good, but it's it's way too far south. Here's the here's the bridge right here, and the sound post is right there. So that's like a good three inches. Okay. So the yeah the sound post is in the wrong county. So we'll get that fixed. This end pen is a homemade thing. Interesting thing though is it's solid ebony. And it's turned, looked like on a sander or something. But it's not centered, which doesn't matter. I mean, the hole's not centered, but it's kind of hard to sand something when the shaft is out of centricity. So anyway, you need a new one of those, but it, it's huge. The hole needs to be plugged. The hole, the hole is um, over an inch. It's like almost an inch and a quarter. The hole is the hole's pretty good. It looks like it was drilled with a, a spade bit or something, so it's it's one and a quarter. It, it looks pretty clean, so to plug that hole won't be that that hard. And then uh, drill and taper it with a um, a proper taper. You can see this isn't tapered. This is just straight. Okay. And and uh, an end pen needs to be tapered like this. Right. So that so that it always moves, migrates in, rather than pushes out. Anyway, and then you got this electric cord for <laughs> your wire. You want to make sure that you you have this about you know essentially where you want it. it. It changes everything as far as tension on the body, how high this is because the angle changes. So if it's higher up off the body, you'll get less downward pressure on the bridge, which is good in some cases. You know if you have a like a kind of a softer base, you know, a little more fragile base, you'll definitely kind of want to maybe experiment with that. But if you have a, you know, a workhorse kind of a plywood base, a lot of nice tension on the top really brings out some volume. This base is, uh, it's medium thickness. I mean, it's not, it, it's, it's, uh, it's caved in a little bit right here, so I know that it's a little bit flexible. And uh, so I'm, I'm just going to do kind of a, um, I'm going to raise it up a tiny bit more than I normally. Sometimes it gets a little choked when it's, when there's too much force. But it's a fine line. I mean, you don't want to, you don't want to have lower than normal pressure on the top because then you won't get enough volume. It, it's a little bit more flexible so this can go more like that. You know if you imagine this movement right here mm -hmm. if it was real stiff in other words if this was just clamped like an arch top guitar with a with a, uh, a hinge or something it wouldn't be able to, to carry that movement as well. So you, you want it to be a little bit flexible, and again, it depends on the base. It depends on what the player likes, how you set up the curvature of the bridge. Uh, if you have a lot of curvature on your on the top of your bridge, you know the curvature here. If you have more of a you know, a smaller diameter there, you, you will, you, when you cross your strings, you'll have to move your bow more. You have to go farther from when you're crossing strings. But uh, you're not going to hit double stops as easy either. So 
if, if you're a jazz player, a lot of times you want a little bit more of an arc. Or, you know, a little bit less radius. Uh, just depends. I make my my bridges match my fingerboard. The radius. Yeah. Not not exactly, but I have a a way of doing it. Not everybody likes it, but it's it has uh, let's see. Like uh that right there is this is a very high uh arching. This is really not so much a um, a standard. This is more of a custom fit, and uh, you can see that the that the fingerboard is in red here, and then this this will be where the where the bridge is and the strings, and uh, this is the E, and that's the G. So it's a slightly greater radius than what the yeah. The well, it's actually not a radius. It's a para parabolic. Okay. So it's more it's more uh, flatter on the edges. This right here kind of tells the story. This this right here is an orchestra um, bridge. And then this run right here is more of a jazz. So the orchestra actually is a little flatter. There's E, A, D, G. And you can see there's two lines here. One of them on the bottom would correspond to maybe if you're going to set up for an orchestra player. And this one maybe if you're going to set up for a jazz player. But I have all kinds of different templates for basses. This is a jazz template. Let's see how yours comes in. I knew that was going to happen. So let's see. This one is almost, it's almost identical to the jazz setup. Okay, well, if you're going to set your sound post, uh, what you want to do is um, put, put your bridge on so that, so that you have tension on the top, down onto the top. Otherwise, the sound post... I mean, the sound post should probably fit without any bridge pressure, but just barely. It should fall down pretty easily. So, in other words, you want to put a little tension on there. So you're increasing the string tension at this point? Well, or right now I'm just untangling the strings there. Getting the bridge so that it's properly oriented. Make sure that your, you know, tail wire is all set kind of right. Um, make sure your bridge is in between the nicks. Oh, there's two nicks in the F holes, and a proper placement of the bridge will be centered, as if there was a line from nick to nick straight across. The bridge will be centered on that on that line. So that's the proper place to put it. You can fudge it a little bit of course because there's no there's no frets or anything like that. So and then the next thing is do this and then you want to center your bridge side to side. And I just eyeball that and you want to look at your fingerboard and then on that side you have the same amount of bridge sticking out as that side keeping in mind where your strings are your strings are actually the most important thing because the bridge might not have been made properly to begin with the, the grooves might not be correct this right here looks just about right maybe the grooves I think are slightly in, in the the wrong place. I wouldn't put them. I would put them all, everything that way a little bit more, but it's okay the way it is. You want your bridge feet to sit correctly on the top. 
In other words, right under the right where the set between the sound post and the and the uh, the bass bar, it has to be positioned correctly. Okay, now I got a little bit of tension on here, and what I'm going to do is uh, uh, okay. Now, and I want to show this. This there's the sound post right there, and there's where it should be. Okay, so we're this far out of whack, and when you have it way out here. This all the tension here just goes, you know, has no place to go, and it's it's bad for the uh, the top of the bass. So you want to take that sound post and put it here for sound reasons, but also for structural reasons. There's a bar right here. It's a brace that goes from about here to here inside. It's about this thick, and it's a big brace, and that takes the pressure from the E side. From the low side. So I'm gonna take the sound post. Hopefully, hopefully it's not too tight in there, but and this thing holds the the base in proper alignment for me. See, so now it's a little more solid. Okay, uh Move my tools. And then sound post setter. And then I'm just going to whack it a couple times just to check to see how tight it is. And it seems, it seems pretty tight. Um, it should move when you do that, and it's not even budging. So, what I'm going to do is, when I take it down, I got to keep in mind that the grain runs this way, of the top. So if I if I hook it underneath and pull this way, I might I might damage the top. You know, I might rip the fibers. So I'm going to use the bottom because the bottom has a smooth platform that it's sitting on. In a flat back base, it either has a brace going there, uh, or in this case, this is a this is a uh, scooped out carved type, and it actually has a little round platform that's solid maple. I can see it down there. So what I'm going to do is just a friction bit between the the ceiling and the floor. And if you look at the top of this base, you will notice that the, that it's it's actually caved in a little bit. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Right here, underneath the foot of the bridge, it should be just a little bit maybe arced slightly from in this direction. And right now it's can concave a tiny bit. So over, that was probably caused by having the base, the uh, sound post, too far back, and all the pressure went here and caved it in. It's not a, a, a problem that can't be rectified. Okay, so here's your, your sound post. So. Now the next thing to do is put it back in, in the right place, which is right here. So I'm going to put it in, see if, I'm going to see if it's too tight. That's one thing we, we're hoping that it's not too tight. A lot of bases have a little cave in. Will it come back to being flat? It, it should. I, I, again, I don't want to wedge it too much, but yeah, it'll it'll come back. Mm -hmm. Sliding the the sound uh, the sound post across the grain uh, along the grain is not as risky as across. You know, you can see I'm 
tapping so that what, what's happening is, is it's moving that round post along the grain fibers. So what you do is you, you grab it and you twist it because you want it to be correctly oriented so that the grain of the um, of the sound post runs this way and the ground the grain of the top runs that way and that that's the way you made it so in other words the curvature on the top on the top of the post cor corresponds with the bottom the ceiling of the um, of the top you know if you twist it this way you're you're out of position you know the curvatures have to match okay now when you put tension on you want to make after you change your strings or, or anything actually if you change your strings you want to change one at a time but if you ever do this what I'm doing you want to make sure that your bridge feet are spread apart as you as you tension up and I like to tension kind of kind of evenly across the strings yeah like I don't like to get this one up to pitch and then you know Keep in mind, uh, and this is important for new people, when you're when you're tensioning your strings, when you're tuning up, make sure that you're in your grooves. But uh, the biggest thing you're gonna uh, problem you're gonna run into is your bridge is gonna want to pull this way. It's gonna want to. Which is what we saw when the, yeah, we walked in here. Yeah, the, the the bridge pull the string tension will pull the whole bridge forward a lot, and you got to keep moving it back. When you move your bridge brace yourself against your body and move you know put tension this way and this way equally as you move it you know I can move this thing two millimeters just by making sure that if you go like this and try to move it boom it'll slap down some people when they move it side to side they'll actually give it a whack I don't recommend that I recommend taking the tension off now again, let's make sure that our, you know, the new tail wire, the new how that, tail how's wire it is all tight. Good. Very, very important that that doesn't come undone. Of course, just gonna just tighten it, just insurance wise. Uh, you know, you got to love these homemade kind of plugs and stuff. They, there's just something cool about it, you know. Musicians are so driven, they just, you know, they have to play and they're going to get it right. They're going to get it working no matter what. So that didn't come out of the factory like that, huh? No, they'll go to the hardware store, they'll make Dream something up, they'll get it working. It's a testament to the fact how powerful music is. proper resonance coming from it. It was that right there is hugely different. I can tell right now. It's not even tuned to pitch, but the G was was throaty and tight. And this this is really different. And I notice your your G string is really still pretty low. I'm gonna just take take a look here at your curvature and it looks okay as far as the placement of the bridge. Um, this one. What I want to do is raise it while I can. If mm -hmm. you get too much tension on that, it's a no go. And uh, as far as the height of the this, it's okay. Uh, if I did it again. When we get the new um, end pen, probably go down just a tiny bit more. In other words, tighten this so that this is just a slightly bit um, closer to there. Now, when I talk about the angle of the strings, okay, imagine if I lowered this down right here, so that so that you have this angle right here, this this angle right here. If I lowered this down, that would be a, a greater angle 
on the bridge and the bridge pressure goes straight down so if this is angled so there's more angle there then you have more pressure down here so if you if you raise this up up to here you have less pressure that goes straight down and the downward pressure uh, you know helps the top vibrate uh, making sure everything is just lined up one more time uh, the feet okay the feet are not fitted properly the, it, it, it's not a great big deal you could probably play your whole career with it like that but you know it there's tiny gaps right here that you need to fix you know it, it just for it to be properly mated the bottom of this with the top of that you don't want any gaps you don't want any spaces it just creates a better sound I, w I wouldn't let it go out of my shop like that Buzzes there, or is no. everything cool? It's about 90% good. Uh, one thing I would do is probably raise this a tiny bit or lower this a tiny bit, um, whatever your preference is. The, so the G sounds way better. You hear that? The G rings. No, it, before it was, all, it was all choked and throaty. up even more don't you think the, the height the G yeah yeah a little bit depends on what you like you might want to leave it it doesn't buzz The next thing is to lower those grooves a tiny bit, mm -hmm. um, tiny, tiny bit, not, not a big deal. Um, make sure that the bridge fits properly. You can just tiny, just do a tiny bit of fitting where there's little gaps there, there's a little chip out right there. In other words, just take it down so that it's smooth. There's a gap under here. So if you push the, the bridge that way, the feet that way, it, it's gonna it's gonna lean too far that way. It, it just needs to be fitted just a little better. Um, when we get the new end pen, um, lower that uh, tailpiece down mm -hmm. all the way to get the maximum amount of pressure. And uh, this this is actually a, just a kind of a flat back base with just a little little bit of an arching in here. It's it's not it's not really like a, a fully carved style it's just I it's just probably induced uh, a little arch in here the way they pressed the veneers into shape they probably had a concave mold and they pressed them in and then when it was dry it just stayed to this shape it's really a nice feature I like that um, as opposed to just completely flat which you see a lot of flat back bases um, there, there's, there is a little arch in here. I mean, you can see that their mold was probably just a little bit arched. You can, I can see the, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then right here, um, the plate is is on one plane. The edges are on one plane, and then it curves in, and that narrows down the the ribs. Right, the ribs are narrower here, and that makes it easier for you to get in here. You know, if this was going straight. It would go up to here, and then you wouldn't be able to, to reach around. Oh, I see. So the, this right here is a feature that allows 
you know this 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 part right here to be thinner than this part and thickness it really does help in most cases because it increases the volume so it's big until it's small and uh, that's just a playability feature so these German bases they're made really nice um, it's got some you know repairs that like right here is some kind of epoxy or something it's 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 all done I mean there's nothing you can do about it you know you wouldn't do it this way right now but it's it's solid and it's on your side you know I mean you, you know there's there's the audience so you know don't worry about that this is a nice little wear mark um, a few scratches but nothing nothing I, I wouldn't even touch this thing up really with any varnish or anything um, the neck is a little bit chunky for me but you want to play with it for a while and just see you might you might want to just do something right here to this I don't know how far this is like an epoxy it almost looks like there's some fiberglass in there epoxy fiberglass and if it works just leave it I mean it's not I of course it's not ideal none of us would do it this way but it's there and it's not gonna break and, and it's gonna play you know really the only thing you could do here is is remove this and put and inlay a piece of wood and that would be pretty obtrusive it would look like a repair um, I'm not sure if it's worth it I don't really like that I probably would paint this some kind of a lighter color so it doesn't stick out like a like you were uh, fixing your car that day and went into play <laughs> Bondo yeah a nice ebony fingerboard um, you know these kind of ebony fingerboards you can't get nowadays they're real uh, nice good ebony back then it was just the standard um, the weight of it seems okay the thickness along the edges is is nice it tapers down in other words the edge right here is about nine millimeters and up here it's about eleven that's that's not uh, the way that you would set it up if you're doing a professional setup but it, it's you know it's fine it's not a great big deal great base though I mean you got you know the the, the ribs are really nice um, flamed maple a nice lightly flamed neck and a German just a standard German carved scroll tuners work fine you might oil them up a tiny bit um, spira cores are nice a nice ebony nut which is you know you know there's a little chip out there but you know you can fix it but I mean that's on the audience side so you might want to do that and and you know you want it to be smooth too but it's not something that's going to affect playability at all if you did anything in the future I I would think the only thing you really would do is get a new end pen which you're going to plan on doing and get maybe later on down the, the line get a new bridge so just play it and get you know get good get good yeah <laughs> <laughs> report back in 10 years <laughs> <laughs> it won't take you that long hope not cool okay well thank you ken for yeah. your assessment and your mm -hmm. setup i think you really transformed it in a short time appreciate yeah, it yeah yeah it's it, it's just those little things that really you know and and now what you want to do is just make sure when you're looking at it see these feet right here yeah. They really don't. They don't really go down. You, you definitely want that gap right there to be gone. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think if I messed around with it, I could maybe make it a tiny bit better. Mm -hmm. But it, really, what it needs to do is be shaved away down here, and it's a good idea to get that done. Mm -hmm. But we'll do that when we do the end pen. Okay. Cool. Play it for now. Mm -hmm.